I'm Brother Lars Jordan, pastor of the New Bethel Baptist Church located at 2729 Oak Grove Road in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And today our Sunday School lesson for April the 21st, 2019 is called to believe the resurrection. And another topic for that is go and tell. And our Bible scriptures today are taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 15. And we'll still in this area, this quarterly theme of discipleship and mission. And we've been talking about that for some time now, discipleship and mission. And the, the immediate theme is, or the unit of study that we're in is called to ministry. As we talked about discipleship, we, we talked about how we are the learners of Jesus Christ, learning about him, his, his walk, his steps that he, he walked while he was here, what he taught, the, the message that he gave. And today we get the greatest message of, uh, that summed up his entire life why he came. He came as the babe of Bethlehem, and that was such a wonderful thing, but he came for a specific purpose, and it was for our lesson today, because even though man could defeat just about everything, while Jesus was teaching, he let us know that every everything that man could 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 just about tame any animal, he, he, man could go out and, and, and even with the power of the Holy Spirit, raise the dead. But that dead person would die again one day. That, that person that was raised from the dead would die again one day. Would, so there was one enemy that couldn't be defeated. And some would say that it's Satan that can't be defeated. Well, we were told that if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. The devil is a pun in God's hand used to, to tempt, test and try us because we while we're here, those are the things that happen while we're in this life. That's that and we know that for a fact. He is called the accuser of the brethren there in the 12th chapter of the one prophetic book in the New Testament, in the book of Revelation, in that 12th chapter, when, that day when his access pass into heaven is denied when he comes up against the, the archangel Michael and Michael casts he and his angels out of heaven and his, his access card is denied. The accuser of the brethren is put away at that time. But but even in the 20th chapter of Revelation, where he is bound for a thousand years at, in that millenn during that millennial kingdom where there's a thousand years of peace and prosperity, the Bible tells us in the third verse of that 20th chapter that even after he had been bound, he will be loosed for a little season. That is to tempt those that have never been tested during those thousand years. So he's just a pawn in the hand of the Lord. He can't do anything anything to you and me unless God allows him to and it's only for our testing, our building up, our getting better and we have the power to tell them just as Jesus told when he, when Satan tried to get into the conversation between he and Peter, we can tell him to get behind us, Satan. And so now we know that Satan can be defeated. He can be told to, to get out of the way and we can stomp him under our feet. But there was one enemy that man just couldn't overcome. A hundred out of a hundred people would die. And Jesus, when he got up from the grave, he defeated that one enemy that man just could not overcome. So now we're taught in our lesson today to believe in that resurrection. We are learners. We are pupils. We are the, the, the under the discipleship of Jesus Christ. You are the disciple of the one that you are learning the most from. And we don't just learn so that we will have knowledge or Gnosticism or have, have this knowledge that's planted in us to, to try to show people we, that we have a great intellect. We are given this knowledge so that it can be used, so that we can go and tell somebody, so we, we can share Jesus. When we sit in the churches on Sunday morning and 
and Wednesday evening, we're, we're not there just to, just to talk about Jesus and learn things about him. Remember, we talked about a fisher, fisherman that would go to a conference and learn about, about lures and, and, and how to fish and the best rods and reels. And the, it, it, it'll be a problem if all he did was learn how to fish and he never actually went out and fished. So we learn so that we can go out and into the ministry field into the mission field and actually exercise the things that we have learned. So now if we, if we believe the resurrection there, it, it, when I look at this lesson today, I would have to put another title on there. If I will, if it, we weren't on resurrection Sunday, if it wasn't resurrection Sunday, I would, I would give two accounts of how Two different types of people accept or receive the message from the Lord because it would be women that will be given a message from the angel and then given a message again from the Lord and they would actually go and tell the disciples. The, the Pharisees and scribes, the elders, they would receive the message. They would hear the message coming from the soldiers and they would have an opportunity to respond at that time to the message, but they would respond in a totally different way, even though the soldiers had a firsthand account of the resurrection also. So now as we go into this lesson today, it, it is most powerful. Resurrection Sunday. This is the Sunday that we're looking, we, we look forward to because that final enemy was defeated. The grave, death did not have any hold on a person that was saved anymore because Jesus was being, getting up from the grave became our first fruit of things to come, as the Apostle Paul would say. So now as we get ready to go into this lesson, some things happened at the end of the previous chapter. Remember the chapter dividers were put in there by the, the translators later on so that we could go and find a scripture easy. But when the Bible was written, it was written by by people that were inspired by God and, 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 and they wrote it and they didn't put all these dividers in there for us, but, but now we have them. So we know that it was in the previous chapter, in those previous verses where the, the, some of the meat of this lesson was because the, the, because Jesus had told them that he would get up after three, three days, the, the Pharisees and, and the scribes, the religious leaders, asked Pilate if they could true up his tomb, the tomb that he was laid in. It could be sealed and have a watch placed over that tomb. In other words, tomb. In other words, some Roman soldiers placed at that place so that they could keep an eye on what was going on, the things that were taking place, and they were able to see. Some of them were there at the cross, and it was at the cross, at the cross where they first saw the light because they had the testimony that truly this is the Son of God. So now we, we, we see here that that after that happened, there the Sabbath is over. Now that, that ended Saturday night. The Sabbath ended on Saturday night. So now we're ready to go in and break forth into the third day, the day of resurrection, the day that Jesus would defeat that final enemy. This had been the passion week that we started last week as the things that were going on. But now we are at the resurrection. We are at that wonderful and glorious day. So now verse 28, chapter 28, the first verse says, in the end of the Sabbath. The end of the that 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 Saturday night, as we would see it, and, and that that ends the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to the sepulchre. Now, more than likely, the other Mary here at this time is the is the Mary that's mentioned there in the fifty sixth verse of the previous chapter. It's probably the the mother of of James and Joseph or James and John, maybe the wife of Zebedee, maybe, but I don't know for sure. They can't be dogmatic about that, but it seems to be. So we, we see here is the first day of the week. What Some would disagree with us for worshiping, having this day designated the first day of the week as our main day of worship. We should worship the Lord every day. 
But some would disagree with you and they want you to keep the Sabbath. And and the one thing that didn't come forward from the Old Testament, from the, the wilderness wandering, was the Sabbath law. The, now things had changed. Now you worship the Lord all the time in spirit and in truth. So this is the first day of the week. And there came Mary Magdalene, who had a special encounter with Jesus, and the other Mary to the sepulcher, or to the grave, to the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Now, look at the things that are happening here at this time. A soldier, a Roman soldier at this time, according to the, the, to the Acts of the Apostle, he had to keep his eyes open. Now, one may be able to sleep while another one was, was, was watching the events that were happening. These guys were actually seeing what was going on, and they may have passed out, but they were able to be account, see some of what was happening here at this time. So there was a great earthquake. Now, there had already been an earthquake, earthquake at his death. Now, at his resurrection, when the angel comes, there is another great earthquake, not just an earthquake. Megas is the Greek word for great there, where we get our word mega. So it was a, an extremely great earthquake that happened, and it was centralized right here at this sepulcher, at this tomb, at this time, this, this great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came down from heaven, and look at the state of the angel of the Lord when he came down from heaven, and look look what he did. He came down, and he rolled back the stone from the door. Who moved the stone? The Bible says right here, the angel of the Lord rolled back the stone from the door. I don't know whether he just spoke it because his faith was complete. He came from heaven. He, he could just tell the stone to move. He, however he rolled it, he may have grabbed a hold of it. He may have pushed it away from the door. We don't know, but it, it, he rolled back the stone from the door. And then he sat on the stone. And look at verse 3. And his countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. <laughs> Three things specifically taught, taught to us right there in the third verse. The way that he looked, lightning, his, his clothing, and the state of himself was purity. That's what the, the white meant at, at that time. It says that his countenance, his face. It, here, it, it tells us what, what he actually looked like. It was like lightning. In other words, they couldn't really make out what the angel looked like. Lightning is something, with, the light is so bright that if we looked at it for a certain period of time, we'll have Z's in our eyes for, for a good period of time. So he was like lightning. He was too bright. His radiance was, was too bright for them to just stare and look upon. He, he, he was a like lightning, not lightning, but lightning like lightning in other words bright all the time and so and his his clothes he was clothed they were able to see the clothing and the clothing was white as snow and David would say, wash me whiter than snow. Now, this was white as snow. If you ever looked at snow on a bright, sunshiny day, and, and it's pure snow, it's, it's kind of hard to look at because it, it, it's, it's, it's just too bright for you to see. But what it means here is the purity of it. it this angel was pure at this time. He, he had, a, had, a, had a specific look, and it was too bright to look upon. He had a, a certain type of, 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 of clothing on at this time. It was white as snow. And verse 4 says, And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. Now, didn't say that they died, became as dead men. It doesn't necessarily say that they passed out, became as dead men. When the Lord appeared to John there in the first chapter of Revelation, he appeared, he, he, he seemed to have, have appeared as a dead man. But the Lord just told him to get up and start writing the things that you've seen, the things which you've heard and the things you'll see hereafter. So these men, they may have been able to see everything that was going on. They just 
laid prostrate on the ground because of the events that were happening in front of them. They, they began to shake and they fell down. They became as dead men is what the, the, the Bible says here. The keepers, these guys that were put here to keep watch over this grave, this grave that had been sealed and, and, and they were trued up because of the religious leaders wanting to make sure Jesus that was dead stayed dead. So here they, they were in their fear. They did shake and became as dead men. Verse five says, and the angels and the angel answered and said unto the women, not to the, the soldiers, not to those that were as dead men at this time, said, fear not ye. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't, it's, it's okay. And that was usually the response of an angel comforting someone that, was, that had the mind and heart of a believer, the, the, not to fear. For I, I know that ye seek Jesus. This is something we I know I know for a fact. Now I say we because one of the gospel writers say that there were two angels. So so but but here here this angel says I know that you seek Jesus. That's a good thing. And and but the fact matter of fact, it's the Lord that sought you. You came here. You wanted to respect and honor the Lord by uh, continuing to anoint his body, feeling like that, that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus may not have got done all that they needed to do because of this, the Sabbath day coming up. So now you want to finish the process. Mary, the, 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 the sister of Martha and Lazarus had already anointed the body for his death prior to this. So now they come here on this day because it was hard for everyone, anyone to believe that Jesus would be resurrected in, in the way that he, he was. He was saying it all the time, but everyone wasn't really grasping what he was saying, but they did love the Lord for real. For we know that you, I know that you seek Jesus, but he says this at the end of the fifth verse, which was dead, not which is dead, which was dead. That was a message in itself. That was already telling the good news. That was already giving a portion of the gospel message. The good news is he was dead. Me saying he was dead means that he's not dead anymore. And that was specific proof that it was a time when he did die. Because even now, some say that he was in an a unconscious state, not really dead. But the angel here says that he was crucified. He was, but he, he's not dead anymore. He was crucified, at, but, but that, that was means that he was, he's not in that state anymore. Verse 6 says, he is not here. It let him know, letting the, the ladies know he is not here for he is risen. He has gotten up from the grave. He is risen. As he said, he had told them this. This is something that he, he had preached. He had, he had, he had shared to, to all those that were listening, his disciples, he, the saints and the ain'ts, the ones that were there trying to trip him up, the Pharisees and the scribes that walked around and followed so that they could know what he was talking about. They all heard this. That's why they wanted someone to take put a watch. They wanted Pilate to put a watch over the sepulcher. As he said, come, see 